Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody here to the 16th annual Saginaw County Sports Hall of Fame press conference. It's hard to imagine 16 years ago, I was six years old and in the first grade. The goal of our press conference is to reveal who our countless number of lifetime voting members selected to be inducted in our induction banquet in November. And what a, and what a class we've got for it this year. Definitely one of our best for the Hall of Fame. I've got one thing before we can get started real quick. They say, never meet your heroes. And if I'm a betting man, some of our inductees tonight and in the past can attest to that. But that's also very hard when that same hero is your dad. So dad, I got you a little something to say thank you um, for doing all that you do for the Hall of Fame. And if you're a friend of my dad's, you know that he loves Popeye the Sailor. <laughs> So, this past weekend, I went to Record Store Day and picked up this Bye Bye LP for you. So that's a little thank you from myself, my brother, and the Hall of Fame. So, let's get this press conference started. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here to introduce the 2017 inductees, 2015 inductee, our president and my dad, Mr. Jack Taney. Thank you, Sam. If, if you could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. I just got a couple announcements before we get started. Um, Don Bethune, our founder and first president, he's experiencing some health issues. If you could please keep him in your thoughts and prayers, we'd appreciate that. Um, I'd like to thank Kroger's and Frank Amuth uh, for donating water and Fabiano Brothers Distributing for donating today's adult beverages. Um, the Hall of Fame's annual golf outing is Monday, June 12th at the Sawmill Golf Course. Uh, see any board member if you're interested in participating. Uh, speaking of our board members, I'd like to introduce two of our newest board members, uh, Mr. Chris Sarmiano and Mr. Ron Stanley. Those gentlemen are right here. Uh, Ron was inducted in the Hall of Fame in 2015. Uh, thank you for coming over to the other side, Ron. Um, for today's inductees, uh, the Hall of Fame curator, Jeff Cottrell. Uh, where's Jeff? Jeff is going to be asking, uh, he's employed uh, at the Cassie Museum here, and he's going to ask um, each of you for a piece of memorabilia to go into our Hall of Fame room to represent the class of 2017. So see Jeff if you have any questions on that. T-shirts, jerseys, hats, what have you. He'll take it. I wanted to mention, you know, things are, um, a lot of great things are happening around Saginaw County sports-wise. Um, Spencer Swellenbach, junior at Heritage High School, he signed to play college baseball at the University of Nebraska. He did that a year ago as a sophomore. Signed with Nebraska. He's a pitcher shortstop for Heritage. Tori Jankoska, she was uh, she graduated of Freeland High School, and she was our 2013 Dr. Tom Slade Award winner for Athlete of the Year. She just finished her senior year at Michigan State University with three school records, including uh, all-time leading scorer, 2,212 points. And she became the first player from Saginaw County to be drafted by the WNBA. And uh, she was the ninth overall pick to play. Uh, she'll play with the Chicago Sky. Pretty impressive. 
And finally, uh, Heritage Baseball coach Bob Andrzejewski just recently, he was inducted uh, 2015, same class as Ron. We just recorded his 1,000th career victory over the weekend. So it just shows you what we have going on in our community. Pretty special, along with what we have going on today. Um, today we're going to announce the 2017 induction class. Uh, it's made up of seven individuals and a pair of teams. Um, I guarantee you none of them are from the Detroit Tigers bullpen. <laughs> um, what we usually do is uh, individuals, we do it alphabetically and then follow it up by the two teams. In our first individual, gentleman by the name of Mr. Dale Brown. I went to pick up my, uh, just quick start, pick up my lawnmower at Carlton Hardware last week. And the owner, Greg Dupas, who I've known for years, he says, Jack, you guys are having your press conference next week. He goes, I need to know, did Dale Brown get in? <laughs> and I said, yes, he did. And it's, I think he was more excited than Dale. That's. <laughs> And that's what that's Carlton. Uh, Dale's the first male athlete from Carlton High School to be inducted into our Hall of Fame. And um, uh, Dale was an excellent three sport athlete. He earned eight varsity letters at Carlton High School. He played two years of varsity football, a uh, solid two way player, earning all conference honors both seasons. He was named captain his senior year. He played three years of varsity baseball for the Cavaliers. All conference senior year, but everybody knows Dale Brown for his basketball playing abilities. He was brought up to the varsity during his sophomore season in 1970-71. One year later, he was averaging 19.5 points per game. He was named the team MVP, named all conference in the Northern B Conference. And as a senior, he was again named team MVP where he averaged over 20 points a game. He was selected to the Saginaw News All-Area Team. He made all-conference first-team honors, as well as being named the Class B All-State Basketball Team. During that 1972-73 season, and this was prior to the three-point line, Dale scored a school record 40 points, a record previously held by George Kubiak. He went on and played basketball collegiately at Saginaw Valley State from 1978, excuse me, 1975, to 1978, where he was named team MVP both his junior and senior seasons. He was also named to the all GLIAC conference team. Dale ended his uh, career at Saginaw Valley, which currently places him fifth all time in Cardinals history. He also has the third most field goals, again, before the three point line, with 701 field goals. He helped turn that Cardinal program around. Uh, very first year as a freshman, they were 10 and 20. Sophomore year, 16 and 12. Then they were 23 and 7. In the next two seasons, the, the Cardinals qualified for the NAIA District 23 tournament. In the senior year, 1977-78, Saginaw Valley was 21 and 8. Dale became an athletic official for the MHSAA in 1988. He has worked championship games in football, softball, boys basketball, and girls basketball. Like many of you, I attend quite a few uh, high school games. I attend them with my son, Joe. He watches the game. I watch the game and the referees. And I do it for three things. I, I watch for a reason. I watch their positioning, and Dale has all three of these attributes. I do it, I watch the positioning, make sure they're in the right place, if they're ever caught out of position. I watch their composure, because you're in a gym full of screaming fans, and they may not like one of your calls. So I, I watch their composure, how they react. And third, I watch for attention to detail. I went to a high school game, and if you've been to a high school basketball game, they typically have the game ball on the scores table waiting for the referee. This high school game I went to is all they had was the ball rack in front of the scores table. 
This is what Dale does. He grabbed three basketballs. And Dale, people watch you. He proceeded to hold them at the same height, and he dropped them to see how far they would bounce, to which basketball he was going to choose that evening. That's attention to detail. And that's Dale Brown. Could have a round of applause for Dale Brown. You didn't think people were watching you out there, did you? <laughs> Second individual inductee is Mr. Jim Buckley. Now, I know Jim has been to his share of press conferences. Jim, if you want pad and paper to take notes, I've got it up here. Um, Ron Stelter called me the other day, and it was about the Saginaw District Golf Tournament. And Jim Buckley's name came up. And Ron Stelter and I talked about Jim Buckley about how lucky our community was to have a daily newspaper of that caliber for this size community and the staff that they had. And that's to Jim's attribute. And um, uh, several outstanding writers and columnists for the Saginaw News, all under the tutelage of Jim Buckley. Um, Jim was born September 20th, 1934, here in Saginaw. Uh, he found his love for the game of golf. At a young age, he caddied three years at Saginaw Country Club. He attended Arthur Hill High School, where he graduated in 1952. He would go on to Bay City Junior College, where he played both basketball and golf. Graduated in 1954. He worked various jobs, uh, including shoe and clothing salesman at various local stores, and he was a construction laborer for Saginaw Lumber Company. He wound up, he graduated from Central Michigan College, not university, Central Michigan College in 1958. And a year later, he earned a secondary education certificate for the newly named Central Michigan University. While he was at CMU, he worked as a part-time reporter for the Saginaw News and for the Saginaw Recreation Department. He continued to write on a part-time basis while teaching English for two years at Saginaw High School. He was offered a full-time job at the News in 1961 by then sports editor Joe Hart. Joe Hart is one of our Hall of Fame inductees. In 1969, he was named copy editor, and one year later, he became sports editor. His nickname was the old Buckaroo. While working for the Daily Newspaper, he hired a number of sports reporters who would go on to work at the news for decades. He served as president of the Arthur Hill Letter Winners Association, 1975. He was instrumental in helping run the annual Saginaw Dist uh, District Golf Tournament. He retired on April 1st, 1996, after a splendid 35-year career at the Saginaw News. That's dedication. He's one of the original board members of the Saginaw County Sports Hall of Fame, which debuted in 2002 and he served as, as his golf outing chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jim Buckley. Our third individual inductee is uh, Mr. Jim Urich. Uh, Jim was born in Saginaw, and he attended Saginaw High School, where he was a multiple sport athlete. He captained both the baseball and football teams, and was named all Saginaw Valley football team his senior year in football. He went on to Central Michigan University where he got his bachelor's degree, chemistry, and education. His football coaching career, which spanned 38 years, began at Bridgeport Spalding High School, where he was assistant football coach for four years. Jim moved on to Chesney Union High School where he coached from 76 to 84. The Indians had an overall record of 57 and 28 with four Mid-Michigan B championships and a pair of state semifinal appearances. He then moved on to Arthur Hill for 12 years, 1985 to 1996. He compiled a record of 86 and 35. His Lumberjack teams won four Saginaw Valley League championships and made five playoff appearances. In 1991, Arthur Hill team won the class AA state championship 
with a 13 to 12 victory over Detroit's Redford Catholic Central. One year later, the Hillites made it back to the state finals. This time they suffered a one point loss to that same Catholic Central team, 21 to 20. Jim then took over head coaching duties at Bay City Western for 12 years, 1997 to 2008. His Warrior squads produced three Saginaw Valley League titles, six playoff appearances, and one semifinal appearance. That was in 2005. His overall record at Western was 71 and 52. His overall high school football coaching record, 214 wins, 115 losses. He was inducted to the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame in 1997 and the Michigan High School Coaches Association Hall of Fame in 2009. He also coached freshmen in JV baseball at Bridgeport and at Arthur Hill for eight years. He also coached Saginaw Superflight A's for seven years in Saginaw Township's Connie Mack League. His teams won two league titles and he played in the state semifinals in Marshall. In a Saginaw News poll, he joined fellow coaches, George Eiler and Bill Kelly, both Hall of Fame inductees, on Arthur Hill's all-time football team. All three are now members of our Hall of Fame. Jim, his brother Terry, was inducted into our Hall of Fame in 2007. So Jim and Terry, um, they now join three other brother combinations in our Hall of Fame. You want to talk about some names. Uh, Sam and Lefty Franz, Smokey and Pat Boyd, and Mike and Paul Walderzak. Jim cut his vacation in Florida short to join us today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jim Ure. This fourth individual inductee is uh, Mr. Frank A. Picard, better known as Judge Frank Picard. And you want to talk about a colorful life. Frank Picard was born October 19, 1889 here in Saginaw, one of 12 children to Alfred and Zephyrine Picard. At an early age, he had hoped to becoming an acrobat. He joined his brothers who performed the flying Picards in circus acts, including the famed Barnum and Bailey Traveling Circus. His father was a hotel keeper here in Saginaw, and he disapproved. He wanted his son to go to high school. So he put an end to the Circus Act, urging him to attend high school. He went to Saginaw High. He was a member of the student council and captain of the football team. In the Saginaw News, that Saginaw, same Saginaw News poll, he was voted to Saginaw High's all-time football team. He quarterbacked the football team, which claimed the 1907 state championship. Saginaw High finished the regular season with a perfect 6-0 regular season record, they outscored their opponents 199 to five. They included a 71 to nothing win over Bay City Eastern, which is now Bay City Central. By virtue of winning the Saginaw Valley League, that Saginaw High won the right to represent the Saginaw Valley in the state championship series. Saginaw High opened the series by capturing a 28 to eight win over Benton Harbor one week later, they toppled Alpena 69 to five. Then on November 16th, Saginaw High nipped Ann Arbor seven to six, and that game was played at U of M's Ferry Field for the state championship of the Lower Peninsula. However, by the action of the Board of Control, which managed the Interscholastic League back then, which is now the MHSAA, in order to claim the state championship, they made Saginaw High come back and face Muskegon. Ann Arbor had previously beaten Muskegon six to nothing, but officials ruled there was an error in bookkeeping. And uh, really strange, but again, we're talking 1907. So um, on November 23rd, in front of the biggest crowd ever witnessed a, a football game in Saginaw, over 2,000 spectators jammed Recreation Park in, here in Saginaw to see Saginaw High and Muskegon fight to a scoreless tie. Saginaw High was named state champion. Frank Picard would go on, uh, served as a journalist, Saginaw Daily News and the Courier Herald, and was managing editor of the Saginaw Exponent. He would go on to play at the University of Michigan from 1910 and 2011 
quarterbacking the 1911 Wolverine team that went 5-1-2. and two. He ended up receiving his law degree from Michigan in 1912. He was admitted to the bar that same year, assistant prosecuting attorney in Saginaw County in 1913 before moving into private practice. Four years later, he entered the United States Army where he held the rank of captain. He saw action in France during World War I. Uh, Picard returned to Saginaw, served as city attorney from 1924 to 28. And from 31 to 34, he served as the first chairman of the Liquor Control Commission. In 39, President Franklin D. Roosevelt he nominated Picard to the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Michigan, and he was then confirmed by the United States Senate. Picard, he remained on the bench until his death February 28, 1963, at the age of 73. His son, John, is under the weather, could not join us today. His grandson was out of town. Our fourth individual inductee is Judge Frank A. Picard. <laughs> Our fifth individual inductee, Ms. Erin Reed. Erin Reed was a standout high school basketball player Five foot five guard, she averaged 25.3 points per game over 91 varsity basketball games. Her 2,306 career points rank her 11th all time in Michigan history. She began her splendid basketball career at Flint Northwestern, where she scored 352 points her freshman year for a 16.8 average as a freshman. Transferred to Saginaw High, she scored 491 points her sophomore year for a 21.4 average. Junior year averaged 28.4 points a game. She scored 709 points, including 39 points against Grand Rapids Central. And she capped her high school career by scoring 754 points her senior year for a 34.3 average. In the game against Midland High School, Erin scored 42 points. She had 10 steals and 7 rebounds. She was a four-time All-Saginaw Valley League performer. and was named League MVP four times, and her teams were a combined 88 and 6 in her four-year varsity career. She was, on the name, she was on the Saginaw News Dream Team three times. She was named All-State four times. She was named both the Detroit News and Free Press Dream Teams. Erin was a three-time parade All-American. She was the state's Miss Basketball Award winner in 1992. She was also on the Kodak All-American Dream Team, the Gatorade Circle of Champions Midwest Player of the Year, as well as being named to the Street and Smith and USA Today All-American teams. She was rated fifth among the top 25 girls in the nation and number one guard. She played one year at the University of Iowa before finishing her college career at the University of Kansas. Her best season came in 1996-97 when she played in 31 games. She scored a total of 66 points. She had 32 rebounds, 25 steals, and 52 assists. She would go on to coach both basketball and track and field at Ecorse High School for a number of years. Erin uh, is the daughter of Nora Wayne Reed, who was inducted into the Saginaw County Sports Hall of Fame in 2008. In doing so, Erin and Nora Wayne, they become just the first father-daughter combination in our Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Erin Reed. Sitting next to Marshall. You get any tips from Marshall? <laughs> Six uh, individual inductee, Mr. Clifton Ryan, who appeared on the ballot for just the first time he be, after becoming eligible. Cliff was born uh, February 18, 1984, in Saginaw. He attended St. Stephen's Middle School before winding up at Arthur Hill High School, where the 2002 graduate. He was a solid three-sport athlete, participating in football, basketball, and track and field. 
two-time captain, was one of the most dominating defensive players in the history of Arthur Hill High School football. In that same Saginaw News poll, he was selected as a member of Arthur Hill's all-time football team and as the school's best ever football team. Now that's a mouthful. He recorded 310 tackles and 12 sacks during his three years on the varsity. Cliff was a three-time All-Saginaw Valley Conference selection, was named first team All-State by the T Detroit News after recording 87 tackles and four sacks. He also played fullback. He rushed for 376 yards and four touchdowns his senior year. I, I'm on Facebook with Cliff and I saw a picture the other day. He was taking a handoff and if I was a defensive back and saw that coming through that line, I don't know if I'd want to tackle that. <laughs> and I'll tell you why in a second. As a junior, he produced 108 tackles, including 11 for losses and three forced fumbles. And he had 115 stops as a sophomore. Cliff was a prep star All-American and named Super Prep, Prep Star and Prep Football Reports All Midwest Teams. He was ranked among the nation's top 25 athletes by ESPN.com's Tom Lemming and rated among the state's top seniors by the Lansing State Journal, the Detroit News, and Detroit Free Press. Cliff received a full-ride football scholarship to Michigan State University. He was granted a medical red shirt in 2002. He'd go on to play 50 games for the Spartans, 35 as a starting defensive lineman. As a Spartan, Six foot three, 310 pounds. He chalked up 118 total tackles, including 20 for losses. He also recorded 10 and a half sacks and two forced fumbles. But he happened to play well in those rivalry games. He had 17 tackles, five for loss against Notre Dame, nine tackles, three for loss against Michigan. In the 2007 National Football League draft, Cliff was the St. Louis Rams fifth pick and 154th player selected overall. You'll like this, ironically, the Detroit Lions traded away two of their fifth round picks to the Rams in exchange for a fourth round pick. The Rams used one of those picks to select Cliff Ryan. The Lions always asleep at the wheel. <laughs> in his debut season, he played in all 16 games and he finished the season with 30 tackles and two sacks. He started 12 games in 2008 and 15 in 2009 before injuries ended his season and career in 2010. His career stats during his four-year NFL career include eight, uh, 82 solo tackles, 21 assists, three sacks, three forced fumbles, and two pass deflections. While in college, he and Lamar Woodley, friends since grade school, they joined forces to help give back to our community through the Heroes for Kids golf outing. Local golfers were joined by college football players from both Michigan State and Michigan at this annual event, which generated hundreds of thousands of dollars for various youth programs throughout the Saginaw region. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cliff Ryan. Our seventh and final individual inductee, another Spartan, Mr. Marvin Wright. Marvin Wright was an exceptional athlete at Arthur Hill High School, where he graduated in 1993 with seven varsity letters. Six foot, 197 pounder, he participated in football, basketball, and baseball for the Lumberjacks. That same Saginaw News poll that I keep alluding to, he was named to the school's all-time football team as Arthur Hill is one of the premier teams in the state during his tenure. During his three years on a varsity, 1990 through 92, Arthur Hill was 30 and five, including a 20 game win streak, which is pretty hard to do in football, right Jim? 20 game win streak. Uh, Marvin was a two time captain. He could hurt you with his arms or his legs playing quarterback or defensive back. He led Arthur Hill to a 13 to 12 win over Detroit Catholic Central in the 1991 class 
double-A state championship game. He ran for a two-yard touchdown and kicked an extra point that proved to be the difference in the game. In 1992, Marvin Gedlin uh, led the Lumberjack to the state title game, but this time they lost to Detroit Catholic Central 21 to 20. He ran 12 times for 81 yards, including a 55-yard touchdown run in that game. He also completed seven of 15 passes for 170 yards, including a 76-yard touchdown pass in that football game. Marvin was named to the Detroit Free Press All-State football team both his junior and senior seasons. He received an athletic scholarship to Michigan State after his Arthur L. career, which saw him with 1,700 career passing yards, 12 passing touchdowns, 1,362 career rushing yards. That was a 5.2 average every time he touched the football running. He had 16 rushing touchdowns. On defense, he produced 92 tackles, two interceptions, a fumble recovery, and three touchdowns. Additionally, he punted 78 times for 36.8 average. As a Spartan, he played for both George Perlis and Nick Saban. I have a couple questions about Nick Saban I want to ask you. <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I bet you do. Marvin was a solid starter at strong safety for two seasons for the Spartans and a special teams contributor for three seasons, earning four varsity letters. One of his top games came in 1995 versus number seven Michigan. We racked up, get this, 16 tackles in a 28 to 25 Michigan State victory over their rivals. Pretty impressive. That same season, he received the Tommy Love Award for being the most improved player on defense. He finished the senior season with 46 tackles and a pair of pass breakups. He is now the proud father of Marvin Wright Jr., who is an outstanding athlete in his own right at Lansing Everett High School and is now playing college football. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Marvin Wright. We have two teams. The first team, um, keeping with that lumberjack theme, First team inducted this year will be the Arthur Hill State champion football team of 1991. It's already got a flavor with the coach Jim Urich, Marvin, Arthur Hill High School. They captured that class 2A state championship. I already mentioned it twice. 1991, the victory over Detroit Catholic Central. That was at the Pontiac Silverdome. It marked the Lumberjacks' first ever football state title since the playoffs were first enacted. After losing two early season games and barely making the playoffs with a 7-2 record, Coach Jim Urich's Hillites finished an amazing season with an eight-game winning streak. Arthur Hill began, uh, began that playoff run with a 32-28 victory over Flint Central in a pre-regional at Arthur Hill's Memorial Stadium. It marked the second time the Lumberjacks beat the Indians during the season as Arthur Hill beat Flint Central 27-21 in overtime during the regular season. And uh, uh, that was the season's second game of the year. This time around, they needed some heroics by Marvin to pull out the win. Arthur Hill was down 28 to 14 in the third quarter. And the Lumberjacks fought back, getting the go-ahead score on a 51-yard quarterback keeper with 6.09 left in the contest. Arthur Hill went on, then went on the road, take on unbeaten Traverse City in the regionals. They came away with a 21-18 win. Both teams scored three touchdowns, but Marvin kicked three extra points, and the Trojans missed an extra point, and Arthur Hill halted Traverse City in a pair of two-point conversions. That's how close the game was. Arthur Hill then went up against unbeaten Adrian in the semifinals. That was at Lansing Sexton High School. They're facing uh, Mark Ar Arbaugh. And uh, Mark Arbaugh was one of the leading passers in the state. He was all state that year. All Arthur Hill did was have two interceptions in that game. They held Arbaugh to one completion in seven attempts for just four yards. The state championship game was a nail biter. Lumberjacks needed to come from behind. 
touchdown to notch the victory over the Shamrocks, who were the defending state champs. With just um, third and goal at the two-yard line with just 148 left on the clock, Marvin faked a pitch and he dove into the end zone for the winning score. That team was loaded with talent. Uh, senior captains, Dan Seaman and Ty Mustafa, they would go on to play four years of college football at Saginaw Valley State University and Northwood University, respectively. Marvin was a starter at Michigan State University. And there was a gentleman by the name of Sam Sword, who was a sophomore on that team. And he played at the University of Michigan, three-year starter, and went on to play three seasons in the National Football League. Marvin was, or excuse me, uh, Sam was inducted in the Saginaw County Sports Hall of Fame in 2007. So off that team, again, Coach Jim Yurick, Marvin, and the entire team will be inducted this November. That Arthur Hill football team. <laughs> and finally, we've got a pair of uh, state champion cross country teams from Hemlock High School. In 1946, Hemlock High School field its first ever boys cross country team. That year, they go on to win a state championship, Class CD. They beat out um, their neighbors, Merrill, for the state title. So fast forward to the late 1990s and early 2000s, where the Huskies, they put together an incredible string of success. Led by coach, head coach Bill Agresta and assistant coach Glenn Cunningham, Hemlock built a solid foundation they won 56 cross-country meets during a five-year stretch from 1998 to 2002. Along the way, five Tri-Valley Conference titles, five Saginaw County championships, and three regional crowns. Hemlock finished third at the 1998 state championship meet, followed by a runner-up finish in 2000, losing to Williamston, a team they had defeated in a regional. Remember that word Williamston because it's going to come up a couple times. Um, in 2001, the Huskies chalked up a 12 and 2 record, and this was in multiple team races, and they were crowned both county and conference champion. So Hemlock would go on to a Division III state championship meet at the Michigan International Speedway in Brooklyn. And despite being ranked second behind Williamston coming into the finals, they won. They led by Juniors Steve Simbor and who finished third overall, and Nick Pucha, who finished seventh, Hemlock rolled to the title by finishing with 137 points. Benzie Central was second with 161, and Charles Lavoy was third with 162. Other finishers for Hemlock, Craig Mandolino, Joe Frost, and Rob Slate. Other Hemlock runners were Andrew. Andrew Henney and G.K. Drown. Uh, Frost, who was running on an injured shin, was the only Husky to turn on a personal best, and they still won the state championship. One year later, Hemlock was 11 and 2, and again in multi multi uh, team races. They won a conference and county meets. At the state meet, the Huskies were running on all cylinders by again capturing the state championship thus becoming the first and only high school in Saginaw County history to win more than one cross-country state title. They had a low of 90, just 90 first place points, followed by Williamston. Williamston and Hemlock had a nice rivalry back and forth. They beat out Williamston, who had 118. Grand Rapids West Catholic was third with 115. Hemlock had Six seniors and a sophomore, they received personal best times from everybody that was in the lineup. Again, they were running out all cylinders. Uh, Simbor and uh, Pucha were second and third respectively in the state. And Simbor, he finished in a time of 1538.05. He narrowly missed winning an individual state championship by a mere three seconds. Williamson's uh, David Bills beat him out. But his time eclipsed the school record of 1540 that was set by 
Kevin Sewell in the 1988 state finals. Uh, Nick would go on to uh, finish at a time of 1549-2, which placed him third all-time in school history. Frost made the all-state team by his, 20, his 20th place finish. Uh, Mandolino, Adam Byersdorf, Henny, and Brent Drown were the other runners on that team. Again, Hemlock is the first inductee, either individual or team, to represent that sport of cross country in our Hall of Fame. There's been other schools that have won cross country state championships. Nobody's done it more than once, and Hemlock is the only team to do it back to back. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Agresta is here with us. Here. So uh, these seven individuals and three teams, um, they're going to be enshrined Sunday, November 5th at the Horizons Conference Center. Um, to put this in perspective, they've been playing sports in Saginaw County since 1894. These seven individuals, they'll increase the total member of our individual athletes to just 146 in our 16-year history. The three teams that I mentioned, uh, the Arthur Hill and the two Hemlock teams, they'll increase that total number to just 39. And the media, which, which is here today, they always ask me if we're worried about being diluted. As far as we're in our 16th year, and look at the incredible class that we have. Um, I always tell them, no, no. When we send that ballot out, it's a ballot that we're proud of. So. Um, that ends our press conference. Appreciate you attending. Could I have a final round of applause for the class of 2017? Again, if you'd like, there's more refreshments. And please, if you haven't been in the Hall of Fame,